my name is Barry Sterling Mitchell. I produced the Sterling Pro Football Net Point Power Rankings and the Pro Football Bias Plus Reports. And this is Ben and Barry on football. Hello out there, everyone. This is Ben Dickerson, your co-host. Week 13 is over. We're coming into week 14. We are really coming down the stretch. I look at the playoff projections on television every day. And the in the hunt group is really, really jockeying for position. This is a great season that we're in. And I'm very excited for week 14. You know, Ben, um, I've been looking at those playoff seedings also. And the one thing I realize is that unlike us, who we made adjustment for the bye week, they don't make adjustments, but they still go by percentages. And sometimes the team that played the smaller amount of total games has a better winning percentage, but they didn't play the same number of games. So I'm not going to put a whole bunch into that until after week 15, because I believe this week, Coming up, this week 14 is the last week that includes bye weeks. Am I correct? I believe you are correct. I believe week 14 is the last week of buys. That is correct. Thanks. But to tell you the truth, I don't think the people on television put a whole lot of stock into it either. Because they do mention, well, of course, they play one game, uh, one less game. You know what I mean? I haven't heard them say that, that much. I have. You I have. have. Okay. okay. Yeah, I have. But, but here's the, the thing. They just, it's fun watching the teams jockey for position. So why the heck not do it? They know at this point, everything's going to even out after this week. So, you know. I think they claim the jockeying put for position more so than the teams. The teams are trying to win the next game. You know, they, they, they're not so, they can't be like, you know, I, I read one thing about the Lions are still alive. <laughs> still a chance for the Lions, you know what I mean? Yes, they are still mathematically, mathematically. in it. If they want to run and win all their games, <laughs> they could make it. But of course, we know that's probably the not going to happen. But it's fun to say. Teeny tiny. It's, it's fun to say when you're commentating, but when you're the team, priority number one is win the next game. Win the next game, yes. You know? Yes. Yes, I'm with you there, coach. That's what I'm talking about, you know. Um, well, speaking of when the next game, you know, you and I, I put out the bias, the Pro Football Bias Plus reports, which utilizes the, the uh, uh, net point margins and the turnover differential, right, margins to, um, to, to analyze the matchup. The idea between that again is that if I'm if one team, if team A is winning by an average of 25 points per game, and they play a team that's winning by an average of five points per game, that difference of 20 points favors the team with the larger point margin. And we apply that same thought to turnover differentials, because we know turnovers lead to points. So um that methodology has served us pretty well. I believe we finished up last year at somewhere like 68%. Yes. This year? <laughs> it's crazy. And, and I heard someone say to me, someone said, the bookies have had to have, have had to have a bad year this year. Like they, they have to be having it a bad year, you know, because of the weirdness of what's going on. I think last week while we were in the 40s, hit 50% on the nose this week, <laughs> okay, which is okay. an improvement, all right? Now, I'm going to say something that came out of some research, and if the people are not listening, they'll miss this. I did some research, and they said that the break-even winning percentage when you're betting against Vegas is 52 point something percent. I'm around it to 53. Okay. That's your break-even. Okay. 
We'll talk. So we've been we'll talk you, the bias has been has been hoovering around that, I'm sure. And the bias has probably done better than me this season, for sure. I think I did a tiny bit better than the bias last season and maybe even the season before. But this season, I suck. Well, I'm again, hard. we have to look at hard numbers because um, this has been – and everyone's saying the same thing. It's been a really strange season, so a season of upsets of teams that, you know, you, you, you know, again, if you look at that team from a number of different perspectives, okay – you know, the Lions were not supposed to beat the Vikings. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? I just wasn't supposed to happen, you know. And uh, thankfully, well, not thankfully, because, you know, I kind of underlying kind of root for the Lions after I kind of really liked their moxie when they played my Niners. And that was like week one. And I've seen them go up and down. And I've seen them shoot themselves in the foot and lose by a hair and all of that stuff. So but when did they got any feet left? <laughs> but, but they, you know they always kind of kept fighting though you know they always yes, kept they kept fighting yes, and so you have, you have to appreciate that and my yep. man Kurt Kurt um Cousins came through with a timely fumble that the Lions were able to quickly turn into a touchdown and uh you know we we talked about my farts you know I can always depend on him for a good one or two. And they don't show up in your fantasy. That probably is not in the fantasy number at all, but it was impactful. I, I was reading different articles from the um, Vikings and they pointed out <laughs> those situations. And then I listened to the media and everybody's saying, oh, Kirk Cousins, you know, he's 71% or whatever completion rate and he's looking great and it, it's not Kirk. I don't know what they're looking at. Well, over the course of the season, it's not, Kurt, but he's had his moments. And some games they have lost simply because of a turnover by him. Did you know when he was with Washington, and I didn't know this, but it came up in the search, he led the league in fumbles? <laughs> I mean, he literally led the league. <laughs> I'm not surprised. Washington was really bad when he was there. <laughs> so I'm not surprised. He got hit and he got sacked a lot. Uh, when quarterback so, gets sacked a lot, he's gonna fumble a lot. So empathetic to Kirk Cousins. <laughs> That's anybody. Okay. If quarterback uh, gets sacked a lot, he's gonna fumble a lot. <laughs> hey, if he gets sacked a lot, maybe he shouldn't be getting sacked. Maybe he should have thrown that ball. Okay. You know, it's interesting. I just saw a, a piece on Dallas, and the guy who's a quarterback, you know, um, they were talking about Jerry Jones. Apparently, he made comments saying that his, you know, one of the problems they was having is their receivers weren't running their routes correctly. He literally, you didn't hear this. <laughs> Look at those eyes. Wait, when did he say this? No, I just said it two weeks ago. Well, he I like said, said this like yesterday or today. I or said it two today. weeks ago. Well, interesting because the, the one of the guys on one of the shows, the quarterback guy, he likes to, you know, show everything. Right. What he showed was that in Dan Orlovsky. Orlovsky. And I thought it was really good. He showed in that last game five to seven plays where Dak had beautiful pockets and was rushing right. balls and wasn't reading what was in front of him. And especially the rushing balls, because he had the one where he where he said, you know, he showed, he said, you know, they had they, they lined up six on D and they only had five man protection. And at the snap of the ball, one of the six dropped back. So it was five on five. And he had a okay. perfect pocket. But he rushed the ball over to the side as if that guy was coming. Like he, like there was a free blitzer, you know. So just keep an eye on what's going on because um, that, you know, you, you might be correct. Dan might be correct, you know. And, and But, you know, different at different times on different plays. But that's what's interesting. And I don't know. You think emotionally, could Dak be moving a little quicker because of, you know, his injury? Could that be in his mind? He's getting that ball out and maybe not taking that extra step, you know, to, to get those reads done correctly. So um, we'll, we'll keep an eye on that. We'll keep an eye on that. So what's going on in the world of fantasy? Oh, the world of fantasy. It's crazy. So in the... Ben, 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 let me stop you. We have to do, we have to get 
permission from the five stair steps for this portion. It's a, a world, world of fantasy. fantasy. <laughs> Love that song, man. It's I know. Classic. I it's know. Classic. Okay, we'll, 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 I'll work on that. I'll work on that. It's a classic. Uh, so as far as fantasy is concerned, this is week 14. So in regular leagues, like if you get in a free league online with a bunch of people you don't know or whatever, okay, this would be the last game of the regular season. And the playoffs would begin in week 15, your first round. And then week 16 would be your semifinals. And then week 17 would be your championship in most leagues. Some will go all the way to week 18. It depends. But, you know, uh, a lot of times they don't like to have games on week 18 because that's when teams will rest players. So you could have stud players that carried you all the way through the season. And then because their team is locked into the playoffs or whatever, those players get rested. You can't use them then. So even though it's called fantasy, it's based on real life. If that guy don't play, you're screwed and you have to replace him with somebody else. So uh, that's why they kind of stay away from the last weekend of the real regular season. Now I play in some leagues, <clears throat> excuse me, where we play all the way to the Super Bowl, which means that we will play our regular season all the way through to week 17. We will skip week 18 for the same reason the other fantasy leagues do, because week 18 is a little shaky when it comes to people playing. And then the week between week 18 and the first playoff games is when we will have a fantasy redraft or a playoff draft, at which point you can keep and or drop players you already have on your roster. And then we have a draft where the teams who didn't make it to the fantasy playoffs, now all their team, all their players can be picked during this playoff draft. Now, Ben, be before you go any further, I do want to just make sure that we mention one thing, right? Because you're in a lot of leagues. Yes. You're actually the commissioner in some, right? I'm the commissioner in three. So you're a commissioner in three leagues. So I just want I'm people to know that, you know, you, this is coming from a commissioner in right. those fantasy leagues. Go right. ahead. I'm, go ahead. Okay. So, so, so that's kind of how it goes. So um, either way, people are in tight spots. Like I'm in some leagues now where the regular season is going to stop this week and the playoffs are begin, going to begin. And a couple of them, I've already clinched a the spot. There are some where I must win week 14 to have a shot to get into the playoffs. So this is a very important week. Uh, not to mention, even in the leagues where we go all the way to week 17 as a regular season, that means that this is week 14, 15, 16, 17, there's only four games left. And teams are still pushing to try to get into the fantasy playoffs. We just had in my main league our trade deadline, which I'm going to have to revisit this next year because maybe I should make it a little bit sooner. But anyway, our trade deadline was midnight last night. So there was some furious negotiating going on and people were making moves and people were making trades. It's a keeper league. So um, obviously some guys are untouchable, whether they're playing or they're injured. Um, also, you can trade draft picks, things of that nature. There were some curious trades made. I don't want to go into detail about them. So I'm going to I've been thinking about this before we decided to start our video here. And I decided to instead kind of let's talk about fantasy etiquette. OK, there's certain things that come under the, 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 the term fantasy etiquette. And one of them is if somebody proposes a trade to you. You see it. There's a notification on the site. There's a notification. As soon as you go to look at your team, there's something up there that says proposed trade. If you don't click on it to see what it is, if you just let it sit there, or you click on it, you look at it, and you don't like it, but you just let it sit there, that's bad fantasy etiquette, okay? 
when you somebody proposes a trade to you, you either accept it, reject it, or counter it. Okay? Could be interesting, but you're like, ah, I'll do it, but I don't want that guy. I want this guy. So you counter the trade. You negotiate. Or you go, oh, that's lovely. Click. I'll accept it. Or you go, what do you think? I'm a sucker. I'm not trading him. And you reject it. You do one of those three things. You don't just leave it sitting there because the person who proposed the trade is waiting to see what you're going to do so that they know what their next move is. It's bad etiquette. Bad. The next thing is, right? Does that make sense to you as a person who does not play fantasy football? Does that make sense to you? <sighs> or, do you or would you say, I, I don't care? Well, I, you know, I'm wondering if there's a strategy to just not saying nothing. You know, maybe if you no. don't say nothing, he comes back and says, I tell you what, I'll give you twice as much. <laughs> he said, uh, there's a possibility let that sweat. That maybe letting him sweat might be a good, a good strategy. That could possibly happen. But here's the thing. If you're playing with people that you don't know, so you're not verbally talking to them or texting with them, you simply put the proposal up and wait for them to do something. If they reject it, you might put up another one and make it sweeter. But if they don't do anything, you don't know if they didn't look at it. You don't know if they don't give a damn. You, you don't, you're kind of in the dark. So you don't have that feature like on my email where I can have a click so that if whenever somebody looks at it, I get a response saying that it's been looked at. You don't have that kind of feature built in. No, no, you, you don't have, we don't have that. Now you can email the person and say, Hey, I sent you a trade. Did you look at it? So you, you guys have each other's email addresses. Yes. Yes. But, but, but usually a person who will let something sit like that and not do anything to it isn't going to answer your email either. So well, that's touch possible, that's good. Possible. And, and yeah. hopefully there's nothing, you know, that person ain't sitting in the hospital somewhere with a real, you know, an emergency. Exactly. So I guess if, if, if you get sick and have an emergency and, and you have your, um, your, your financial designate uh, legal, your financial legal person, you got to make sure that you put in your, your papers to contact the fantasy people and let them know. <laughs> no, well, We'll figure it out if you're in there long enough because when the next week's games come around and you didn't change your lineup, we'll know something's up. Something's up. That's and interesting. Right. That's interesting. It, 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 you know, it's much more social than, than Madden. Um, I usually, you know, try to uh, do the virtual version of the game that I'm going to play. I did not do it this week. Two reasons. One, the schedule just pushed me right up against the time when we started recording. And I, I didn't really have time. And then two, I'm really finding out that this game is a week behind. So like if I go in right now and, and they have a lineup, it's last week's lineup. It's not this upcoming lineup. Ah. So I, I, I have to kind of pick the game and, you know, and, and play it. And then as I'm looking at it, the, uh, the roster is not updated. So okay. I'm looking, I'm online, I'm on, I'm just looking and I see Mitchell might not, excuse me, might not play. He's in a concussion protocol, you know? So yeah, that's what I just read. Oh, so, so that means if you tried to play the game today or tomorrow, he wouldn't be there. No, he would be there, which is why to me, it's not kind of right because, uh, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. And whoever's going to replace them, because he's out, Sermon's out. We got a few people that are out. Sermon's out, Wilson's if out. Debo's out, I mean, you know. But, I mean, it's okay. You know, that's what coaching is about. That's why I like the game. But I would like it to have been updated so that those situations are a little more real for both me and the, on even though Because Mixon, yeah, isn't, what? isn't Mixon hurt? I think Mixon's hurt too, right? Mixon's hurt every week. He still plays. Okay. Well, These guys... These guys get an injury in week three, and they manage it through the whole season by not practicing the first two days of the week, getting in a partial practice on Thursday, and then having a full practice on Friday. And they do it week after week after week. And every week, when you look at something, it's got an injury designation by their name. Yeah, they're hurt. Everybody's hurt. 
Well, everybody, I um, how much I, I kind of thought uh, mixing got hurt recently. We'll, we'll talk about that in the next section. That's the first quarter for Ben and Barry on football. I want to remind everybody to click the notification bell and the, the follow-up bell or signia to follow us up and all of that kind of good stuff on YouTube or to make sure that you're checking us out on any of our social media and on our podcast, which is on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. So, all right, let's get ready to go to the second quarter. Now, Benny, this was another weird weekend, but what we're going to talk about first is the rankings, the updated Sterling Pro Football Net Point Power Rankings, because the ranking situation is, you know, what comes out of this weird season are weird rankings. <laughs> so let's get ready to kick this off. Uh, which is what we're right here, um, because I want to get to the top eight. Now, the crucial eight, that's what I'm calling them. So I'm giving everybody a chance to kind of peruse the bottom. You might see a few surprises. I think the L.A. Chargers being in the bottom, number 27 on defenses, and down there with both Las Vegas and Minnesota is a little bit of a surprise. These teams need better defenses. Um, you can see why some teams are having problems. You know, Miami, good defense, but they're only scoring under 20 points a game. And then you have your net points within the first row here. And again, net points and turnover differential, which is the last row, are the two stats where you can have both a positive and a negative number. So let's skip through. Here's, here's your, your third eight right there, 17 through 24. And, you know, there's those weird New Orleans Saints at minus 0.2. Uh, your turnover differential, San Fran and Kansas City in the lower third of this, of this grouping, um, in this grouping, which is the lower third. Tampa Bay giving up 22.5 points at number 17. I think that's one of the surprises. What do you think? As far as uh, points against? Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm a little bit surprised. I'm not shocked. Uh, their defense has not been top notch the way it was last year. And if you remember correctly, even in the early part of last season, they were having some issues, but they kind of gelled and came together and got everything right uh, coming down the stretch. So I expect them to do that again. But right now, we yeah, about they, that. Uh, we talked about that with the Bucks last season. After the bye, they was they was on they went on a roll, no right. doubt about it. Um, but okay, okay, moving on. All right, the uh, second grouping from nine through sixteen. Now you're getting some very interesting groupings of teams that you you would say, okay, these are contenders. You know, maybe verging on pretender status. But there's nobody here that you don't think could could go on a run, but they would have to go on a run for the most part. Uh, Chargers being ninth in scoring, uh, Phillies tenth. Um, the interesting three way tie in scoring between Tennessee, San Fran, and Kansas City. You know, and I'm surprised. Um, that they're ahead of Green Bay. To be quite honest with you. You know, uh, Baltimore's defense uh, ranked ninth, uh, just ahead, really one a point one a, a ahead of the Colts. So all of those these teams are defenses that are pretty decent, not bad. There's your Giants, ranked ninth with a, a plus point three turnover differential, tied with Seattle and the Rams. Nice company, you know, to be with. So. What do you got on this, on this grouping? Well, uh, when I look at points four, 
I'm not surprised to see where the, the charge is up there. Philadelphia, I am, especially since they're ahead of Minnesota. That's a that's a little surprising, but the fact that they're 10 and 11 in points four is not surprising. Tennessee has faltered some without Derrick Henry. San Francisco's on the rise. Uh, when we talk about defense and the points against Colin, uh, Baltimore is hanging in there somehow. It's amazing. The Baltimore Ravens, I don't think they have a starting player in their secondary. I think everybody in their secondary is a, is a is a backup player. All their starters are hurt. They've really, really been ravaged on defense. Um, Indianapolis, on the other hand, I think they had some injuries early on, but they kind of got some people back. Um, they're playing much better of late uh, as far as defense is concerned. Miami also is playing much better of late. Uh, Cincinnati also is playing much better of late. Uh, Dallas is not. Philadelphia is not. The Rams are not. <laughs> so, did you do your did you do your last three weeks thing, or did you uh, just do yeah, that? Yeah, I have back? some of that. I have some of that for you too. Um, okay. I do want to say now Baltimore made that decision to go for two, right? Yeah. They wound up losing the game, and from what I and when they could have tied it, and from what I understand. What you what you're saying about their defensive backfield was probably as much a part of that decision as analytics or anything else. I think it was a huge part of it that they could put the stop on defense if they gave the ball back. Like I believe it was a huge part of it. Really, they struggled in that game. They've been struggling. They're beat up. A couple guys went out during that game, and. If they run that play 10 times in a row, he completes that for the score nine times. Well, you know, that, that the DN um, for, for P Pittsburgh, um, Watts, played that very well. He played that very well. Yes, he did. No, he did not. Yes, he did. He, he disrupted that he pass. Did not. That pass he didn't was disrupt anything. Oh, okay. I, I watched replays of tapes where they broke it all down. Yeah, he didn't come like right in, where, where which is what that play is looking for. That deep, that he played deep. it as best he could. He didn't do anything wrong, but he didn't affect that play. Okay, Lamar, we will just Lamar put that. too much on it, huh? Lamar put too much on it. That's all, plain and simple. He he helped disrupt that pass. Okay. I'm gonna I'm making that. If you don't believe it, we'll go back, we'll look at film and we'll take it from there. I have to look at film. I watched the game twice. I watched the not, not only watch the game, I watched the film breakdown on that same particular situation. Okay. So, All right. And what the person said higher football probably, minds than me yeah. and you basically made that statement. Oh, oh okay. All right. Okay. Let's move on. To the top eight, which is rare. This guy throws passes through a thimble, and you're going to tell me that he get out of here? <laughs> Come on, look, hey, they got to explain it some kind of way. Look, look, he's a he's, so that's their explanation. He ain't Tom I have no choice but to go with it. So you know, it doesn't make it right. All right, let's get to this top eight. Um. For some reason here, I'm seeing a disconnect between what I saw on my graph and this, because this is showing Buffalo in first place by 0.2 and New England in second place. So we'll get that straight. Um, but long story short, Tampa Bay is coming in first in scoring. New England continues as first in defense. And Indianapolis is tied with Arizona at plus one turnover differential for first and second. So what do you think about your top two, three, top eight, Benny? Well, if we go from right to left instead of left to right and do we turn and do turnover differential first, we're not surprised that Buffalo, who was number one there at least two weeks ago, has now dropped down to number four because they've had some uh, turnovers and um, they've – giving the ball away a few more times and they've taken it away. 
So we understand that. Indianapolis is coming off a bye. Uh, that helped them a little bit, but they were they were playing well as far as turnovers are concerned. Uh, kudos to Carson Wentz, who was a turnover machine when he was here his last years in Philadelphia. But now he's not getting hit as much in the backfield, not getting sacked as much, not getting having the opportunities to be stripped of the ball. And so uh, that's that's helping their turnover differential number quite a bit. Same thing with Kyler Murray. Kyler Murray barely gets touched as it is, let alone tackle clean enough for him to fumble. And his defense is playing extremely well. So again, um, that's 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 a good deal. And obviously New England's playing really well on defense. We go over to uh, points against, and like I just said, Obviously, New England's playing very well on defense. That game against the Bills was uh, a, a really good game, very strong game. Uh, I think we're going to talk about that game a little bit later, so I'll, I'll save my other comments for that. But they've earned um, they've earned their number one ranking in points against. Obviously, Buffalo's still up there. Their defense is very strong. Uh, Denver's a bit surprising. Denver's up in there. They've had some close games. They've won some, they've lost some, but they haven't gotten blown out a lot. So, you know what I mean? They're kind of hanging in there and just not getting it done offensively. That's their problem. Arizona, again, just had a bye the week before last. Green Bay just had their bye this last past week. Uh, I don't even want to talk about Seattle right now, points against. I'm surprised they're sitting there at number six, to tell you the truth. Their defense is a shambles. Points four, Tampa Bay is rocking right now. They are cruising along. Their offense looks extremely dangerous. They have a beautiful run-pass balance on that team. It's, it's magnificent to see. They're really, really scary when Tom Brady's got the ball in his hands. Uh, Dallas, still riding high. Had some really high-scoring games over the course of the season. Uh, obviously, you don't see them there in the points against category in the top numbers because we passed them back when we were looking at the dregs of the league in that category. That's where they are defensively. But offensively, Dak puts up numbers, and they've been putting up numbers. So now whether they continue to do it, we shall see. Their schedule dictates that they will. So I expect to see them stay at the top of points four. Arizona, also strong offense. Kyler Murray throws for two, runs for two. Almost every dog on week, it seems like. It's crazy. Wentz playing well. I don't know about Stafford. I don't know. I don't even want to go any further than that. <laughs> for, the, for the sake of time, I'll move on to net points. Net points. This is the main thing. This is basically our power rankings. Buffalo to be sitting at the top, and I know you said that, that could be possibly off by a few percentage points. Uh, it could be New England. Uh, I seem to believe in my head that Buffalo is still hanging on there, number one. So when you get that fixed up, we'll see. New England deserves to be at number two. They're playing extremely well, especially with a rookie quarterback. I saw somebody on Facebook up, Facebook put up side-by-side -side comparisons of uh, Mac Jones' first 12 games and Tom Brady's first 12 games. And Mac Jones' numbers are clearly better down the board. Passing percentage, touchdown to interception ratio, everything. Yards, everything. They're very close, but Mac Jones' numbers are generally better than Brady's were. Uh, just a little tidbit there. Again, Arizona, Kyler Murray, what are you going to do? Chase Edmonds goes down. James Conner steps in like nothing happened. Tampa Bay, obviously, with Tom, Dak with Dallas, Wentz playing well with Indianapolis. I named the quarterbacks because, let's face it, it is a quarterback-driven league. It is a passing league. Uh, so the teams that are doing well in those particular categories are going to be ranked high. And the ones that have good running games along with that are going to be ranked even higher. And all of these teams, except one, have both. Hmm, who could that one be? The one at the top, Buffalo. Their lack of a running game scares me, but we'll talk about it. Yeah, a couple of things that, that uh, 
Buffalo Patriot game uh, was, again, my intriguing game. It was the weather, first and foremost, you know, dictated to, to a large degree. Um, and what came out of it was that um, Josh Allen arm was strong enough to cut through the wind to the point where they felt they could even pass in that particular weather. Um, and his arm apparently is that strong. Now, arm strength wise relative uh, to, to Mac, uh, they said during the pregame he had some problems. So that also informed them and what they were gonna do. But you and I talked about their run game with Rondre Stevens and all of those guys. I'm, I'm sorry that they're uh, the first running, the, you know, running back, the one who scored, uh, he got injured. And, and, and so I don't know where he stands injury wise, um, but Ramondre had to come in. So that, that was not just an intriguing game. And while I think it was going to go down as a historic game to some degree. Let me ask you a question. Uh, Nicole Harry, down there fielding punts. You, did you see that turnover? Yes. He never fields punts. Why? I'm like, <laughs> why is he back? Why, why is he back there? And then it's like he didn't know to get away from the ball. The, these guys kill me. They do like just to tell everybody to get away. Then he leans and then into they don't the, get away. He don't get away. <laughs> Listen, now you know me. I praise Belichick all up and down. But that's that's a coaching error because whoever you put back there to field punts, especially if it's not your regular guy, you can't send him on the field without saying they're kicking from here. So put your heels here. Put your heels on the five yard line. If it looks like it's going over your head, let it go. If it looks like you can catch it, fair catch it. If it's under that or the wind gets it call everybody off and get away. I've seen college games, college, where the guy goes like this and turns and hauls ass off the field so that the ball has no chance to hit it. Once you make it clear, I am not fielding this punt, there is no need for you to stand there. That's a nothing good can come, nothing That's good can come of it. Guys, you know, and, and I don't know what they're thinking, but they're so drawn to the ball. That it's like, yeah, nothing good can come of it. It really can't. Once the decision has been made that you're not going to field a punt, nothing good can come of it if you stand anywhere near where that ball is going to be. You just got to move and take your chances that you get a good roll. If you get a bad roll, you get a bad roll. There's nothing you can do about it. Nothing. You, can, you try to scoop it up. Oh, it's a bad roll. I better get You try to scoop it up and they tell you there anyway. <laughs> oh, I'm telling you, it, you know, it, it's it's so interesting um, when you see this and like I, you know, we 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 give Belichick all the respect. But then you see something like that and you're like, you know, how did this happen? That that was not smart. You know, that's I don't know why they did it. But since you brought it up, I, I saw something about uh, the bills putting somebody back to return punts that wasn't normal. And the two people that have been doing it off and on over the course of the season, he said, and he didn't use these words, but in essence, he said he did not trust them and put somebody else back. Yes. And word got back to the players and they weren't very happy about it. So that's not good either. Okay. All right. Well, let, let me say this because you asked me about the last three weeks and, and you know, I go to uh, uh, our, the website team rankings to take a look how that, how this breaks down for the last three weeks. And um, first off, I'm just going to run through, I believe this is the average score, scoring margin. Yeah. So this is our, our, uh, you know, points for or um, net points, same thing, scoring margin, same thing. I'm going to go five, Tampa Bay at plus three, 13.3, four, <laughs> this is interesting, Miami plus 13.7, three, mm -hmm. Kansas City 
plus 16.7, tied with two, Indianapolis at point, excuse me, at plus 16.7, and numero uno is New England at plus 17.3. And that's just over the last three weeks. Three weeks. That that tells me a lot. And I and when I when I hear those numbers and I hear those teams and the positions that they're in. Uh, and I think back about how they've been playing over the last couple of games that I can remember, it makes a whole heck of a lot of sense. Number one, you got a couple of resurgent defenses there. Miami, who I went crazy over last year's defense, and then they looked exactly the opposite the first half of this season, seemed to have found their form again. For whatever reason, and maybe it's because some injured guys came back or whatever, their coach has gone back to the way of doing things uh, like he did last year. A lot of attacking, a lot of zero blitz, you know, man to man, all that stuff. And it's been working for them next, to, uh, along with the fact that Tua is looking pretty good. Um, yeah, Tua's, gonna, Tua's messing up their, uh, their ability to be skeptical about it. He's actually playing pretty well. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, he is. <laughs> He was playing well, and 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 people who believed in him and fought for him and talked him up the, the, the year that he was drafted, they just they they kept saying if he gets over this hip thing that he had, because remember he had a severe hip injury, almost to the point of what retired Bo Jackson, and he was able to recover from that, you know. But again, when you have injuries to your hip anywhere in your legs. First, you have to go through the healing process physically. Then you have to go through the healing process mentally. I think he's now past that. So, you know. He had a really couple good. other injuries also in the beginning of his in his rookie season. Yeah, they, but they're, they're minor compared to what he went through. Yeah, they were minor, but, you know, none of he, I think he's pretty healthy right now. I think he's pretty healthy. Yeah, I think he's pretty healthy right now. All right, that wraps up. The second quarter of Ben and Barry on football. Again, you can find us uh, on YouTube here, on Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter, uh, and on podcasts, on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Ben and Barry on football. Don't forget to uh, click the bell so that you'll be notified when we put up a video. We normally put up a video once a week, usually by Thursday uh, because we record on Wednesday and I do all of the post stuff and I'm slow. What can I tell you? Long story short, let's get ready to move on to the next uh, quarter, the third quarter, which is the Pro Football Bias Plus Reports. Right there. Okay, so Ben, third quarter. Now you know this is the quarter when guys like me and Madden were always the ones that were deferring way before that was popular. We were deferring in Madden so that we could collect all that good intelligence and come out in the second half and take control of this game. And we're going to do that with the bias plus reports. Let me remind people. Let me remind people, Bias Plus Reports is where we take the sterling, the net point power rankings, the actual rankings of the net points, or the actual net points, rather, not the rankings, but the net points themselves, and the turnover differential. And we utilize those numbers to look at the matchups and the team with the better net point differential and also the uh, turnover differential will normally be favored. He's used the term favorite because there's no guarantee. And as a matter of fact, this particular year has been really weird. But again, the logic of it is that the team with the greater net points would be favored. Now, if they lose, that's what defines an upset. <laughs> so again, we're going to talk about this because we had a few upsets I think, for example, we talked about the Lions and the Vikings last week. Would you call that an upset? I would definitely call that an upset. I would definitely call that an upset also. All right. 
Well, let's get ready to kick off the Thursday night game. All right. Look what we got on Thursday night. NFL Week 14, Pittsburgh Steelers at Minnesota Vikings. Bias plus score 4.6. Favors the Vikings. Mm. Uh, uh, this is a tough one. Off the top of my head, I want to say Vikings because I know they need to bounce back after losing to the Lions. Obviously. But then I look and see they're playing the Steelers, <clears throat> and they are at home, so the Steelers got to travel up there, which is not a big deal because, actually, I've been watching this whole traveling fans thing this season. The Steelers fans travel with the best of them, bro. I forget what game it was. They darn near took over a stadium. It was crazy. Yeah, because the announcer mentioned it. <laughs> yes, yeah. yes, yes. Terrible towels waving. I'm like, where are they playing at? Look like Pittsburgh, but yeah. Anyway, um, the Steelers really, really battled last week to beat the Ravens, albeit a game they probably should have lost if Lamar had completed the pass on the two-point conversion. However, they really battled. And I've been talking about Ben Roethlisberger's new alarm for the last couple of weeks, and it's not any better. But Again, I will give credit to the Pittsburgh coaching staff and their offensive coordinator. They seem to be scheming up plays that he's extremely comfortable with so that he can get the ball out on time in places where he doesn't have to expose his lack of arm strength. They're staying away from the outside the numbers throws and throwing more around the numbers and inside. Now, he did hit some passes on the outside. Um, Deontay Johnson made a couple of great catches for him, too. But uh, he looked better. So uh, I'm not saying he's coming back to life or anything. The man already said he's probably going to retire after the season. That being said, I think Minnesota's going to bounce back in this one. I'm going to go with the bias. I think they're going to be all right. Uh, they didn't lose much with Dalvin Cook being out. Madison played really well. Um, Justin Jefferson's playing great. Thielen is a little dinged up, so that's something to watch out for. I think Thielen's out. Well, yeah, I, I believe I heard he was doubtful, which probably means he'll be out. Um, but they got a kid named K.J. Osborne that's not bad. So they should be okay. What scares me is, and again, just this – God, I don't want to talk too much about one game. Let me just say this. The Pittsburgh Steelers need to really, really, really come up with what they're going to do about their quarterback situation quickly because their receiver core is borderline atomic bombish. okay? They got a really nice receiving core. They've got to make a good choice on a quarterback, be it a free agent or somebody they get in the draft. Because when Ben retires, whoever comes in and takes his spot is going to have a lot to work with. That being said, you know what? I changed my mind. I'm going with the Steelers. <laughs> You're hilarious. But let me say something that's interesting because – the Steelers, when we talk about balance, they, they are about as balanced as you can be relative to points for and points against because they're 21st in points for and 21st in points against, uh, scoring 20.3 but giving up 23.8. Um, small turnover differential, minus 0.3. Uh, the, the Vikings are ranked 16th, whereas the Pittsburgh was ranked 24th. Um, but then that points is only 0 0.3. So they're, right. you know, they ain't, they're not lighting up the world. They're right. giving, they're scoring 25.7 and they're giving up 25.4, ergo to 0.3. So he bent right. balance at maybe a, a slightly higher level offensively, but lower level de defensively. You know what I mean? Than, than the Steelers. 
So, you know, you might have something there. Well, balance is good, but low level balance is still low level balance. There's high level balance and there's low level balance. You know what I'm saying? Right. Well, you know, again, that, that's true. That's true. But um, it kind of depends. Again, we're getting to that point where injuries are, are going to be that much more of a factor because we knew at, with the longer season, you know, at, at the in the last stretch. Mm -hmm. And I and I heard um, uh, Jones Drew say it this morning that going into the last uh, quarter of the season, last month or so, the team, the healthiest team is going to be the team that does the most winning for the most part. So okay, you're going against the bias. Yes. For the Thursday night football game that will be played in Minnesota, going against the home field advantage. And, yes. Uh, okay. There you go. My record, is, my record in Thursday night games also is like horrendous. I mean, I've, I've, it, it, we're in week fourteen, and I think I've actually picked the winner on Thursday night right two times. <laughs> so I got a real problem with Thursday night games. Thursday night <laughs> games. All right. Okay. Well, let's get ready to go to Sunday. And look what Sunday's kicking off with. Ben, this is a potential intriguing game of the week for me. It has to be. It has to AFC be. AFC North, baby. AFC North. It's a crapshoot. The Ravens have to go into Cleveland and play the Browns. And the bias plus score of 2.1 favors those Ravens. But I think the Browns are getting their running backs back, or at least – one or two of them, am I correct? Yeah, they're both back. They're both back. Oh, that's trouble. Yeah, Chubb is back. Um, and and Hunt is back. They kind of uh, put him on a pitch count the last game. Um, but then they, they had a bye. So, so he should be fully healthy now. And when I say fully healthy, obviously nobody in the NFL is fully 100% healthy. But he's going to be healthy enough to play. Um, so that's a good thing for them. The bad thing for them is that Baker Mayfield is not healthy. And if the Ravens can somehow get to him, that could be trouble for the Browns. They are already are lacking, uh, in receiver depth. Uh, Landry is racking up catches and yardage like crazy, but he doesn't score a lot of touchdowns. Um, I don't want to say that their offense is inept, but is definitely wounded. Um, Speaking of wounded, the Ravens secondary is a mash unit at this point. But if they can get enough of a pass rush to get on Baker, first of all, they got to get him in passing situations. But if they can do that and they can get to him, he's basically one hit away from being uh, going to uh, Case Keenum. So uh, that's the situation there. That being said, I don't think the Ravens will have any problems rolling into Cleveland. Uh, I think their fan base would be more than happy to take that short trip. And uh, I'm going to go with the Ravens. You know, I, ha I had a funny thought, um, especially if the Browns insist on going with Baker. Like you said, Baker's pretty beat up, you know, and I don't know how well he can throw, whether he's got, you know, where his arm strength level is. But they got their two running backs back. And, and the Baltimore Ravens have a mash unit, so I'm wondering if they sat there and watched those Patriots and said, hmm, we don't necessarily have to throw the ball. <laughs> if we can run it down their throats, a la the Patriots. So it'll be interesting to see what percentage of run pass Cleveland comes up with, unless Baker comes out and looks like he's feeling okay and ready to throw the ball. Um, I don't know that they have the patience to be that way. I really don't. As good as their running game is, I, I don't. I don't think they have the patience to just continuously run the ball. It does take patience, man. It does. It does. It really does. That's a level of discipline that most coaches could stand to achieve. All right, who's up next? The Jacksonville Jaguars at the Tennessee Titans. Tighten up, baby. Bias plus score 13.6 favors those Titans. Oh, I got to go with the Titans. I, I, 
at first, I was really worried when Derrick Henry went down. But uh, Deontay Foreman and Dontrell Hilliard, I had to remember the names because I've been, I've been looking at them in fantasy. Uh, they both broke 100 yards rushing last week. I think they're going to be okay. Tannehill is Tannehill. Wait a minute, AJ was Brown that, is still one got 100 or the total between the two? No, they both broke 100 individually okay. on the ground. That's strong. Yeah, that's real strong. So, um, and we, we all know what Tannehill is, and I believe Julio Jones is back this week. Now, I don't know what condition Julio Jones will be in. Uh, I'm hoping that they probably chose to keep him out of – uh, maybe a week extra to make sure that he was as close to 100% as he possibly could be um, because they need him. Uh, but uh, if, if they continue to be able to run the ball the way that they have, you know, when you got an offensive line that blocks as well as their team, as, as the Titans offensive line does, it probably was just, a, a it, they just needed a moment for those guys to get some practice reps in to get their timing down, how to hit holes, you know, that kind of thing. Look at some film to get their feel for how they want to run the ball. Derrick Henry and that offensive line are like this. He knows what they're going to do, when they're going to do it, how fast they're going to do it. They know how fast the guards pull. They know when they run a trap play, he can bounce it outside. They know all that stuff. He knows all that stuff. Those guys don't because they haven't been getting playing time. But now I think they're ready to roll. The Titans are still going to be scary. Um I'm going with the Titans on this. I don't think the Jaguars are going to be able to, to handle them. There you go. Okay, going with the bias, 13.6. That's a nice, healthy bias favoring the Titans. It would be an upset. Remember we talked about the what would define an upset? This would define an upset if the Jacksonville Jaguars found a way to come in and beat the Tennessee Titans. Stranger things have happened this season, though, Benny. Okay, another potential intriguing game for me. The Las Vegas Raiders at the Kansas City Chiefs. The Chiefs are favored by a bias plus score of 5.5. And I, and I guess it's as much because as bad, you know, the Raiders are, are challenged big time right now, but, you know, they've beaten the Chiefs when no one expected them to beat the Chiefs. So I don't think anybody's expecting them to beat the Chiefs. Uh, in this game either, uh, they're a minus 3.2 in net points. The Chiefs are plus 3.7. So the Chiefs are coming out of their doldrums, especially defensively where they're ranked eighth right now. Um, and if their offense gets on track, okay, then, then you got something. Um, but the Chiefs are favored in this one. What do you got? So we were talking about the Chiefs getting their mojo back a couple of weeks ago, and I kind of poo-pooed it. Um, okay. Who the Chiefs got their mojo back. Yeah, they got their mojo back. <laughs> Defensively, now, now they got their mojo back. De and it's basically based on the defense. Right. Defensively, they are playing far, far better than they played earlier in the season. They're playing far, far better over the last two weeks than they played over the previous three weeks before the last two weeks, if that makes sense. Okay. I don't know what they did exactly, but I think they've had a little run of games here where they've been able to kind of take control of the game and then just let the defense just go. They just let their pass rush go. Their pass rush looks drastically better than it was. And obviously when you have a really good pass rush, you can get away with some weaknesses in the secondary. And I think that's what they've been doing. Uh, also, uh, I was reminded that their defensive coordinator, Steve Spagnola, who used to be the defensive co coordinator for two Giants Super Bowl teams, is known for coming in with a defensive system and working it and not panicking and taking sometimes three quarters of a season to get it right and then get on a roll at the end and make it work. He did it with the Giants twice to take them to Super Bowls, and that seems to be what he's doing now with the Chiefs. 
they're getting right on defense. And when they get right on defense, that makes Mahomes even better. And I believe the last time these two teams played, the Chiefs blew the Raiders out of the off the freaking field. Okay. So okay. I remember making a comment about they just watched somebody beat the Chiefs using cover two, and they came out and didn't use cover two, and they got slaughtered. So we'll <laughs> see what happens. But I don't. The Raiders are kind of they're 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 beat up now. They're they're in trouble. Well, let me add to your argument here, because when we're looking at average points against over the last three games. Yeah. I'm going to give you one, two, three, four, five. Washington averaging 17 points allowed. Amazing. Amazing. Baltimore at four, averaging 14.3 points per game. Prophetic. Miami at three, allowing only 12 points per game on average over the last three games. Was wondering where it was. Now I see it again. Number two, Kansas City, allowing 10.7 points per game. Over the they had a couple of low scoring games. They had a couple of games where they didn't score a lot either. So they're not blowing people out. You know what I mean? And leaving them for dead. They, they had a couple of little tough ones. But, yeah, defense is playing much improved. That's second over the last three weeks only to the New England Patriots, who are only allowing over the last three weeks 7.7 .7 points per game. Yes, stellar. <laughs> stellar. So, yeah, 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 your point is well taken. Let's keep an eye out on this one for the Chiefs. All right, next up. The New Orleans Saints at the New York Jets. J-E-T-S, bias plus score 13.7 favors the New Orleans Saints. It just sounds a little high to me, even though I know the Jets are really playing poorly because, you know, the, the Saints are you know playing weirdly. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, Taysom Hill, I guess it's, it, it will be in there. For them, I don't uh, know. I never like. Well, I guess the last time I saw a quarterback try to jump over somebody the way Taysom did last, it was like last week. He just said, "I can't throw. I'm just gonna go ahead and run it. Let's go." <laughs> Trying to jump over people and all types of stuff. But man, you ain't gonna last long doing all of that if you're supposed to be the starting quarterback. <laughs> there's there's a lot of stuff going on with the Saints. There really is. Kamara's hurt. I don't think he's going to be back this week. Ingram started out looking pretty decent, but now his age is starting to show. Taysom Hill, I, I, I know that they're sitting down there in meetings questioning, is he going to help us more at quarterback or is he going to help us more at the three other positions that he plays? You, you know what I mean? Like where are we going to get the most out of this guy? Because he is not a quarterback. <laughs> he is he is an athlete who can throw. <laughs> He's not a quarterback. So and 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 when I say he can throw, you know, I put asterisks around that too. You know, once his finger <laughs> got injured, though, this, that's when he was like, Yeah, I that was the end of that. Yeah. But but they're saying his finger is not as bad as Russell Wilson's was. They expect him to be able to go. So they just have to make the decision as to whether they actually want him under center or they want to just go with Simeon and see what they can do. Um, the good thing for the Saints is they're still pretty tough on defense. They've had their issues, but I think most of their issues have come from uh, being on the bad end of time of possession and field position because the offense just wasn't playing well. In which case, I mean, I don't care how good your defense is. You can only stand to get pounded on and stay on the field, but so long. Uh, in this game, I don't think they'll have that issue, so I'm going to take the Saints in this one. Uh, the Saints are a negative 0.2 in net points, but the Jets are a negative 12.5. So, there goes. Negative 12. Wait, uh, I'm sorry. Oh, oh, negative 12.5. I got you. And net and points, yeah, the Jets. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. 
All right. Enough of this one. Not one of my intriguing games of the week. <laughs> there you go. All this right. All be. right. Uh, I'm kind of intrigued by this one. I'm kind of intrigued by this one, Benny. Dallas Cowboys at the Washington football team's bias per score of 12.5 favors the Dallas Cowboys. We had a little conversation about the Cowboys earlier, about route running and pocket presence and and uh, defense, you know, which is uh, something that they're looking pretty decent at. But again, uh, you stop calling the Washington football team's defense vaunted, um, but then you, I think you softened on that a little bit uh, at one point. But they're ranked 24th. Dallas's defense is ranked 14th. Their offense is ranked 20th. Dallas's offense is ranked second. So mm-hmm. not that much drama here. What do you think? Except for the fact I mean, that it's a division I contest. <laughs> I haven't softened on whether or not I want to call them vaunted. I'm definitely not going to do that. But I will say this. Week 12, they held the Seahawks to 15 points. Week 13, they held the Raiders to 15 points. Yeah, well, they're in the top five defensively over the last three weeks. I think we did name them, yeah. right? They only give them Yeah, that's seven. right. You did say that. You did say that. Now, whether or not they can do that to a division rival that's had a few issues over the last couple of weeks that's really, really going to come in fighting. I don't know. I think Dallas is border, bordering on uh, being a little desperate to kind of put the rest of the division away. Everybody's too close. Last year when everybody was close, everybody was just kind of close and everybody was just trying to battle and, Maybe we can win this, we can win this, we can win this. But coming into this year, Dallas was hands down the favorite to win this division and looked like they were going to win it easily. And now here we are right back where we were last season with who the heck is going to pull this thing out. So I think Dallas is the more desperate team, but I think Washington will be the more confident team. I... I'm going to take Washington. <laughs> Go and tell a Heineke, baby. Curtis Heineke. Samuel's back. Heineke's a story, man. Heineke's a story. Uh, yeah, I, you know, I don't know. Um, you know, some of these guys come back from COVID and they look fine. And sometimes they don't. I'm not so sure Mari Cooper is 100% there. I'm not so sure. I didn't hear if he was actually vaccinated or not. But I think it's interesting because when they were talking about his effect when he's out and how how big a part in that offense he plays, I I was a little surprised because they got a lot of good receivers, you know, that it was that, that they relied on them that much. Well, they they have a really good receiver in C.D. Lamb. They got a pretty good receiver in Gallup. And everybody else is kind of okay. Because it was those okay guys that had me make the statement two weeks ago that the route running was off. Because Dak couldn't hit them. And then when he did hit them, they dropped it. Remember I said they got a bunch of no-name guys I never heard of? One guy's name is Butler. The other guy, I still can't remember his doggone name. But First thing, now not that, Chucky, is it? No, I don't think it's Chucky. Uh, <laughs> That's an inside <laughs> joke. <laughs> but anyway, my Jaguar, yeah. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm going to take Washington. Going with Washington? Yes. Going with Washington against the bias in a 12 and a half point favorite. Okay. All right. Let's see what you got next. Oh, Falcons Jesus. at Panthers. Last first score of 8.4 favors the Panthers. All right, who's quarterback in the Panthers now? Tell me. Cam will be back this week, supposedly. They're in a tough spot. They're in a tough spot. Uh, PJ's just not ready. He's not. He's been around a couple seasons. I'd hope that he would be a little bit more ready than he is. He's obviously not ready. 
They're going to go with Cam. This is a game Cam should be able to win. The Falcons aren't going to present too much trouble for him on defense. Um, he should be able to get some nice runs on him. He should be able to throw on him. DJ Moore still gobbling up targets. Shouldn't be that big a deal. But it's a division game. It's not a big travel for the Falcons to go to Carolina. Um, these teams know each other really, really well. Um, I just, it's sad watching the slow death of, of, of um, Matt Ryan's career because he looks really bad. What's really keeping them afloat is the amazing Corderell Patterson. There you go. That's amazing, man. He's amazing. <laughs> But I'm going to go with the Panthers on this one. I think Cam is going to uh, check himself and say, you know what, I can't, I can't mess this up again. Because basically this is Cam's last shot, whether anybody knows it or not. This is Cam's last shot. He doesn't make it with these guys. He's not going to make it. He's going to have to be a backup. He can make it as a backup, you know. Yeah, Cam doesn't want to be a backup. I, I don't know. think Cam that's what I, that's. And I don't think anybody wants a presence like Cam as a backup he would have to become contrite and put that out there in such a way you know yes um, and that's that's really not him that's really not him but uh you mentioned Cadero. I i'm glad you did because i the, that's the surprise on the falcons we were all looking at their tight end and waiting for the, all the great things that was going to happen because this great tight end and he is actually very talented he is very good but the surprise is Cordero Patterson, so no doubt about it. All right, going with, you're going with the Panthers, right? Yes, sir. Okay, everybody take note of that. Uh, <laughs> All right, Seattle Seahawks at the Houston Texans, 12.7, bias plus score favorites the Seattle Seahawks. Uh, as you normally say, I don't think we need to spend a whole lot of time on this one, but you know, I thought about when you mentioned <laughs> PJ uh, with, with Carolina, I think about Tyrod, and I'm thinking eh, there's not much difference between those two. Am I am I off on that, or am I about right? Uh, now, what do you mean, playing style? Yeah, playing style, playing capability. They're kind of mobile, they, they, but they just they don't seem uh, to be able to get it yeah, done. Yeah, but it's not a fair comparison because Tyrod's an old vet, and PJ's like a third year player. But but when you look at them. The way they move, the way they throw the ball, they're running Billy, things like that, how they move in the pocket. Yeah, they're kind of similar. But Tyrod got benched last week. They decided <laughs> to go ahead and go with the rookie. I wouldn't be surprised if they just stick with the rookie and just finish out the season with him because he's the future. Tyrod is not. Um, and neither one of them can save Houston. And um, we've been waiting for Russ to kind of wake up, kind of looked like he woke up last week. Didn't I say that was my fear? That Russ yeah. start cooking when, with the Niners? Right. And I tell you, it was a little scary there because I'm thinking if he had one bad game when he first came back, the next game, he'd be right back on point. But then he had another one. And I'm like, uh-oh, this could be a problem. But last week, he seemed to snap out of it. So that being said, this is a game they can go down and pretty comfortably handle the Texans. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to take Seattle in this one. I think Russ is going to use this one to even sharpen his skills even more for coming down the stretch and make himself uh, Danger Russ again. Danger Russ. There you go. All right. Who's up next? There's those Lions at. The Denver Broncos, by a first score, 11.1 .1 favorites the Denver Broncos. As much as I like the Lions, I don't think they're going to go into mile high and get that done against this Bronco team. Unless, of course, Teddy Two Gloves sidesteps like two or three interceptions and lets the defense run back in for touchdowns. <laughs> uh, I don't think that's going to happen. I, I thought Teddy played pretty well, uh, considering. Um, I'm going to go with the Broncos on this one. Uh, I, I appreciate the Lions. I appreciate the fact that they're playing really, really hard. I think that Goff uh, is really, really trying with very limited weapons. 
Although uh, Aman Ra St. Brown yeah. is proven to be a pretty good wide receiver. Uh, they just don't have much else. Swift might be back this week. I'm not sure. Jamal Williams cannot carry the loaded running back by himself. And their defense is hit or miss. So I'm going to go with Denver, especially after that performance that Javante Williams put on last week. <laughs> oh, my God. You, you know, it, all, even before the season started, I was reading, and they're saying Javante Williams will probably work as a timeshare back with Melvin Gordon. But over the course of the season, he will most likely take over as the number one back. Oh, yeah. Who was, that, who was that prognosticator? Uh, there was a few people that said that in different really? ways. Yes. And I watched him in college. He played in North Carolina. The kid was nice. And he, the first tackler, never brings him down. <laughs> Hardly ever. And I like backs like that. So with Melvin Gordon out, he carried the whole load. And I mean, he put some bruises on some D-backs. <laughs> so, you know, and Dever was extremely patient, kept feeding him the ball, and he handled it. He handled it, much to the chagrin, chagrin of people who had uh, Denver wideouts on their fantasy teams because they didn't get many targets because this guy was grinding out yardage like crazy. So, yeah, love Javante Williams, like the Denver Broncos in this game, picking Denver. Yeah, I mean, you got the Denver has a third-ranked defense. Detroit has the 20. Right, their defense is still good. Denver's defense is all right. 29th offense. So third defense versus the 29th offense. I can see that. Uh, again, ladies and germs, if the Lions beat the Broncos, that would define an upset. <laughs> all right. Well, not as much would define an upset, but the New York Giants – your New York football giants are going into L.A. to see the Chargers, the bias plus score of 4.9, favoring those L.A. Chargers. So right before we went on here for this recording, I was looking over these matchups and I was saying, because I usually don't look over them right away. I usually just look at them for the first time when you pull them up. But I looked ahead today and <laughs> I was like, oh, God, I can't even think about picking my team. Chargers coming off a big win last week. They're home. It's going to be crazy. And then I found out that Eckler's nicked. He should be okay. Um, Keenan Allen got COVID. So I was like, I'm scanning all my teams. Where do I have Mike Williams? I'm starting Mike Williams. Start Mike Williams. Guess who came down with COVID today? Mike Williams. So now the two starting backs are out with COVID. <laughs> I mean, the two starting wide receivers out. Yeah, yeah. are out with COVID. And the and running back's nicked up. He's nicked up. He'll Now, he'll probably be okay. But... He's a little shaky catching the ball. He's he's had some some good receiving games. He's been targeted four or five, six times a game. He catches three, four, five of them. But I see him cough up a couple of fumbles too. I, I don't know, man. If Danny Jones was playing, I'd take the Giants right now, knowing what I know. Because this is a team also that gives up yardage on the ground. And Barkley gets healthier and healthier every week. But not Mike Lennon, bro. I can't. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, you, Man, you feel my pain? Freaking yeah. Mike Lennon. Yeah. Let me see. Okay. Can you see, see that? Yeah. How close is Mike Lennon to Daniel Jones? Is he this close or is he further apart, further apart, further apart? Yeah, you can stop right there. 
Okay, that's what you see as a differential between Daniel Jones yeah. and Mike Lennon. Okay, and, all right. Yeah, and, and understand this. It's not that Daniel Jones is that much better. It's that Glennon is that much worse. <laughs> if that makes sense. Yeah, I would, hey, it's like with net points. You know, Daniel Jones might be a plus three, but Glennon might be minus 17. <laughs> that, that's the differential. But you're going with? I don't know who I'm going with. <laughs> I, I, I don't. I don't. Well, I got blue on. I got your blue on. <laughs> All right. Okay. Wait, let me think. Jalen Guyton, and I don't know any other receivers off the top of my head that play for the Chargers. Defense has played well over the last couple of weeks, though. But so yes, has the Giants. Have. Have. Yes, let me see. The Chargers. I got to put this all on Mike Glennon. You said over the last going... couple of weeks, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. Because I see that the Chargers defense is ranked 27. The Giants defense is ranked 18th. Yeah. Yeah. The but it, the Giants it. offense is ranked 28th. And the Chargers offense is ranked 9th. Yeah, that's, that's not. So, you and know, that's, you're, you're and they got Jones Mike Glennon, bro. Situation. They got Mike Glennon. I can't. Pick a game on Mike Glennon. Take the Chargers. Take the Chargers. All right, there you go. This football thing kicked in on him. All right, where are we standing? We got the Chargers and the Giants. Okay, we're coming down. We're in the four the four o'clock group of games here, Benny. The evening games. All right, I couldn't yeah. play this game. I couldn't, you know, I couldn't do the virtual of this. San Francisco at the Cincinnati Bengals by his close score. 3.3 favors those Bengals. Mitchell's out, but Kittle's back. It depends what they want to do, especially with if Debo's out. I mean, Kittle can make such a difference if you use him correctly. Um, but I, you know, some of the stuff that they're doing, I don't understand. Even when you were texting me about the game last week and he's like, you're running Garoppolo and options. And I've seen him do that. And I was like, what are you doing? You know, I thought the thing with Garoppolo was that he was injury prone. So it wouldn't be what you would want to do. I mean, if it's a valuable thing and you got to do it, you got to do it. It's the game, you know. But, you know, if you're supposed to have a running game, then you, you know, got all this running back stable and you're running your wide receivers too, and you got Kittle, you got a lot of running options besides your quarterback that you should be able to call uh, plays on. So um, because my, my defense, I believe, is really struggling against the pass, um, I can see the Bengals, you know, getting the, the, the little bit of the favor here. What do you got? Well, yeah, when you talk about your defense, um... Russ had his awakening against your defense. Uh, it looked like the Niners were trying to do everything they could to give that game away last week. Uh, but Kittle was just so outstanding that, um, that, that, that he, he handled most of his business. Mitchell handled his business too. Unfortunately, Mitchell, Mitchell is in concussion protocol and he just announced today that also he's feeling some discomfort in his knee. So first of all, we got to hope he makes it through the concussion protocol. And then even if he does that, he still may not be able to go because of his knee, but we don't know how bad the knee is. Now, I believe Debo Samuels is trending toward being able to play. If that happens, you're going to see him running the ball quite a bit. I, I, I believe they'll use every which way they can to get the ball in his hands. Kittle obviously is a beast, but he won't be as beastly against the Bengals as he was against the Seahawks defense. Oh, gee whiz, I tell you. Uh, and it's hard, it's hard to surmise the Niners and how they're playing the run lately because the Seahawks really don't have a run game. Okay. Mixon, what yeah, let's just, about Mixon? Is he in or is he out? Well, I don't – when's these too early to call? Okay. If, if they have a doubtful on somebody on Wednesday, they're probably not going to play. But a questionable, you got to wait and see what they do on Friday. 
If he practices in full on Friday, he's going to play. And I think he's been nursing something for a while now. So I'm going to say I believe that Mixon will play. I am really, really in the dark on Mitchell. I have no clue. Concussion protocol is tricky. Well, like, you know he's not going to be there for this game. They, they bring in outside doctors for that. So it's a lot of impartiality as far as letting – the player know and letting the team know if the guy's ready to actually go back and play again. So I'm going to assume Mitchell's not going to play. I'm going to assume Mixon is going to play. I'm going to assume that Debo is going to play. And I also know that Ayuk is starting to stretch out a little bit. Somebody said, Ayuk, Ayuk, Ayuk is on fire. (laughs) Oh, look, that's horrible. No, that's not that's oh God, that is not good. I like how you. Wait a minute. Did you see the jewelry he had? The San Francisco medallion. It it was literally like that big. The big ghost. He had it on during the game. At, at some point after the game, they had a picture. Oh, of it. okay. All right. No, you couldn't even hide that thing, man. You could use it for a breastplate. So I'm I'm going to say this. I believe that the Niners are going to go into Cincinnati and they're going to battle these guys, but they're not going to be able to handle Mixon. They're not going to be able to handle T Higgins. They're not going to have an answer for Jamar Chase and they're going to end up losing this game. I'm going to go with the Cincinnati Bengals. I think the Bengals pass game is too strong. And even if Mixon is compromised, if he plays, he will do enough and the Bengals will win this game. I'm going to take the Bengals. Going with the Bengals. Hey, Ben, I'm looking at points per game for the last three weeks. Yes. Number one, Indianapolis at 34.3. Number two, Tampa Bay at 32.7. Number three, tied. Cincinnati. Huh? Go ahead. I'm sorry. (laughs) Tied with the L.A. Chargers at 31.7. That's your Cincinnati Bengals. Exactly. But listen to this. Fifth place, Minnesota at 29 points tied with the Niners at 29 points. Uh, y'all had a couple of big scoring games. That's 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 a little last smoke and mirrors there. Last three weeks, but okay. Going with the Bengals. No problem, oh man. And I believe this is the last of the four o'clock games coming up. Potential intriguing game of the week. And again, I don't take my team and I'm Niners, baby. So I I never do my team for an intriguing game, but you have a Buffalo Bills at Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the bias plus score favors the Bills at 2.9. Little teeny tiny bias plus score, 2.9 favoring those Bills. You hurt, their feelings are hurt. They feel disrespected. I'm getting ready to sing Temptations. I'm hurt, downhearted. (laughs) But, and then they got Mr. Tom Brady. What did you say? The perfect balance between the run and the pass? On their offense, yes. And they're going to be down in the beautiful weather. Now, sometimes these teams that are used to the cold go down and struggle in Florida in the heat (laughs) every once in a while. They get down there. And, uh, it's not exactly hot down there right now. Well, it, it hopefully it's for them. Hopefully them it's, it's beautiful football weather. Yeah, it's like in the 70s. It's 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 fine. Um, but I think the Bills are in a little bit of disarray right now. Disarray is probably not a good word. But things are not right in Buffalo. Uh their lack of a running game is starting to really drag them down a little bit. Um, the better weather will help their run game because that's going to loosen things up for Josh Allen to be able to use his wheels. Um, but I'm not sure that's going to be enough to beat the Buccaneers. Uh, also, and you find this a lot, teams that have trouble stopping the run, which teams that have trouble running the ball have trouble stopping the run also, and the Bills have trouble stopping the run. Let's face it. Damian Harris 
and Ramondre Stevenson basically won that game. You know, and when your quarterback throws five passes the entire game, three, and you end up winning, three, three. He threw three passes. Yeah, that's even worse. I mean, he completed one of them, right? So I think it was two <laughs> for three. He was two, two for three. For, oh, okay, two for three. That's pretty good. Yeah. That's damn good. <laughs> <laughs> you know, considering so they carried that game on the ground. And believe me, I'll tell you this. I'm not, this is nothing new with me talking about the Bills run game and their lack of uh, the ability to stop the run. I've been talking about this for a while. If I had known at the time we made the video last week that the weather was going to be that bad, especially the wind, I would have 100% took the Patriots. And I know people are going to say, oh, are you just saying that because now you know that? No, for real. Because I know the team with the better run game is going to win the game. And the Patriots obviously have the better run game and are obviously better against the run defensively. That's a no-brainer. If I had known that wind was going to be that vicious, that game was an easy pick to take the Patriots. But I thought if the weather was regular, regular, just cold, I'll take rain, I'll take wind, I'll take snow, not the wind. Josh Allen beats them with his arm, which he almost did. He missed like three touchdown passes where the guy's running and the ball goes whoop like that. So, you know, what are you going to do? Anyway, take the bucks. Yeah, I, th I thought that the one thing they could have worked done a little bit better, the Bills, was that short passing game. You know, forget the 20, 30-yard pass. Let's get that seven-yard, you know, that, you know, you could use that like the run. But, uh, you know, that, that's, I don't think that's um, the, their, their strong suit in those, those short passes like that. So um, that's Actually, it is. Point. They usually use Cole Beasley for that. But Well, your third down, yeah, Cole happening. Beasley is all over the place. So, you know, he's usually really, really uh, um, reliable. So, you know. Okay. So you are going with? Buccaneers. The Buccaneers going against the bias. And going against your boys, the Bills. Oh, oh, oh. man, that's that's two of the guys, the teams that you kind of like, and you went against them this week. All right, that wraps up the early evening portion of the NFL schedule. Let's get ready to talk about Sunday night. I said, I just found your intriguing game, but let's talk about this first. Yeah, let's talk about this one first. The Sunday night matchup between the Chicago Bears going into Green Bay, um, where Aaron Rodgers has ownership of, you know, not only of, he probably owns some stock in Green Bay, but I think he owns the franchise in Chicago from what he said anyway. Bias plus score 12.1 favors Green Bay Packers. That's what he said. He said, I own you. That's exactly <laughs> what he said. And guess what? He's right. He does. Andy Dalton stands no chance on the frozen tundra. And they better not start fields. If I'm them, I'm shutting fields down for the season. Well, I think Fields yeah. is playing. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. You know, they, they, it doesn't make sense. That makes no sense to me. I'm sorry. I'm not a Bears fan. That makes no sense to me. Why would you continue to put him out there? This team is not very good at all. He cannot save them. He's not going to manufacture. What? How many games are left? Five? Let me read you seven hours ago. The report on the ESPN... Chicago Bears team pay says Bears fields cleared. We'll start at quarterback versus the Packers. Justin Fields has been cleared to return from his rib injury and will start at quarterback for the Bears on Sunday, Coach Matt Nagy said Wednesday. This obviously the uh, you know, so 
reports come out that Matt Nagy is going to coach his last game this season on Thanksgiving. And then after the game is over, he's told, he's given a vote of confidence and told that that's not going to happen. And then as soon as he gets that news, he loses his freaking mind and takes his future with bad ribs and puts him out there in a losing cause. That team is not ready to win. That team cannot protect Justin Fields. It's over for these guys. Let Dalton stay out there, okay, <laughs> and just finish up the season and be done with it. It's ridiculous. This game will be no contest. Take the Green Bay Packers. They will win, and they should win handily. Taking the Packers, going with the bias, they should win. I understand what you're saying. I mean, it, it, basically what you're saying is they need to be packing it in and protecting that their future. Absolutely. Okay. All right. All right. I've seen enough from Fields to believe in him. I believe that he's their quarterback in the future and that he can be a good to very good NFL quarterback but they have to build the team around him. So you keep sending him out there with messed up ribs and all this other stuff and no protection. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. It makes no sense. All righty. That wraps up the Sunday night game. Okay, Benny, you ready? For oh, I'm ready. Monday Night Football, another potential intriguing game here. You think this is it, eh, don't you? I think this is going to end up being your intriguing game. I hope my analysis of this game does not change your mind. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me read it out for, the, for those listening on podcast. The LA Rams at the Arizona Cardinals. Bias plus score of 5.1 favors. The Arizona Cardinals. Everyone's having a hard time believing in the Cardinals, Ben. Why? I guess it's because they're the Cardinals. You know what I'm saying? Do um, they not have the best record in the league? Hey, look, best record. However, the Cardinals in the net point rankings are third. You third. Have Buffalo and New England. Where are they points for? Third, behind Tampa Bay and Dallas. Where are they points against? Fourth, behind New England, Buffalo, and Denver. And where are they turnover differential? Uh-oh. How about second, tied with that Indianapolis at plus one, so they're actually tied for first. And that spells balance. <laughs> yeah, that's balance, no doubt about it. And balance. That's look at top the Rams, and balance. You know, Rams look a lot more shaky than the than the Cardinals do. Right. That's not middling balance. That's not low level balance. That's high end balance <laughs> across the board. Okay. That's what I'm talking about. Kyler Murray is having an MVP season right now, even after missing a couple of games. This guy, Russ, comes off an injury. Takes him two, three games to get his stuff together. Kyler Murray comes in. It's like he was never out. I'm like, when was he hurt? He was just hurt, right? <laughs> Dude's all, he threw for two and ran for two. That's that young, that young, <laughs> young legs. <laughs> Yo, this is amazing stuff, man. And it's, I love his legs. I love the way he runs. I, I get all that. But I never expected him to be throwing the ball as well as he's throwing it this early in his career. You remember last season, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think we had a discussion about having questions about this air raid offense. Remember we was questioning the air raid a little bit? Oh, yeah, we had to question it because they're bringing this college concept into the pros and we didn't know if it was going to work. Right, and it was looking a little say, shaky. We did say that he had, he had probably the, the, one of the few quarterbacks who could really run that system in Kyler Murray. Right. And we figured they were going to have a few growing pains, and they did. Right, and, and I remember saying 
I don't want to trash it, but he's going to have to tweak it to put it on an NFL level. And it looks to me like they've done that. Looks to me like they've done that. You know, DeAndre comes back off a hamstring and catches a beautiful bomb. Yeah. James Conner is like when he first got with the Steelers. And Edmonds will be back this week. Oh, they got their one-two punch back. Take the Cardinals. Take okay? the Cardinals. Take yeah. the Cardinals. This game is not going to be as intriguing as some people <laughs> think it's going to be. I think the Cardinals are going to handle these boys. Stafford's already showed some cracks. Stafford looks, he looks nervous. He looks like this nobody is uncharted thinks, territory for Stafford. Nobody thinks I'm supposed to mess up now that I'm on this team. So when I mess up, I feel really, really bad. <laughs> you know, I think he's piling a lot of pressure on himself. And that's not good for their team. And again, losing Robert Woods hurt. But Stafford looks pressured. He he he, he ain't looking right, man. Now, Odell, I'm gonna give it to Odell. Odell is trying his best to fit in here and help out. Okay, but they're not targeting him enough. I know that sounds crazy. I know we said. Baker Mayfield targeted him too much, okay? But he seems to fit the Rams' offense a little bit better. I think Odell's going to help them. I think they might make some noise in the playoffs. But they're going to lose this game. Let me simply say this. And just tag looking, because, again, I like, you know, I'm looking at the last three to see an indication of momentum. Mm -hmm. And although... You're absolutely right about the way they look. When I'm looking at Arizona over the last three weeks, they're really down in the bottom third of the NFL on defense, allowing 23 points per game. Again, that's as compared to New England at 7.7, Kansas City at 10.7, Miami at 12. So those are your mm -hmm. top three defensively. Um, so that's kind of the standard that's been set. And again, there's a lot of teams in between the top three and Arizona, including your Giants. I mean, they're only mm -hmm. giving up 19 points per game as opposed to Arizona at 23. And then when I go on offense uh, over the last three, again, I'm seeing Arizona – Below Pittsburgh, below Dallas, New England, the Rams. The Rams are, over the last three years, averaging 25 points a game. Arizona is averaging 22. So momentum-wise, it looks like Arizona may be slowing down a little bit, but I agree with you that I think they should win the game. The last piece that I'll put on them as a – as a, okay, we got to put a question mark on it, is that it's the weirdness of the division. This is the NFC West. Mm -hmm. And it's wild in the NFC West. <laughs> so uh, this should be a fun Monday night game, no doubt about it. Any last words on Monday night? Uh, let me say this. Week 11, the Cardinals played the Seahawks. Cardinals beat the Seahawks 23 to 13. If I remember correctly, the Cardinals had this game in hand early and the Seahawks got the 13 in garbage time. Week 12. Uh, who'd the Cardinals play in week 12? <laughs> were they off week 12? No, they were off week 13. No, week 13, Cardinals beat the Bears 33. 22. Game was well in hand by the end of the third quarter. I don't even think Kyler played most of the fourth quarter. Bears scored 22, most of it in garbage time. So that stat can be a little... Okay. Uh, we'll, 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 we'll put an asterisk next to those stats and see how that okay. all works out. All right. Very interesting. 
because I do remember that they did go up, you know, in, in a couple of those games. And like you said, they even sat Kyler at one right. point. You know, but okay. All right. Anything else? No, that's all I got on this. I'm, I'm looking forward to week 14, man. I'm mm-hmm. telling you. I, my mind is, this was fun. This is always fun when we do this. Okay. And I feel really good right now. I got to take the look at the schedule and the upcoming schedule and, and pick the winners and, and go through all this stuff. But as soon as we get done with this, man, I'm going to be right back in the trenches, right back in the lab, because this is the most excruciating time in fantasy football that there is. Okay. I got a league where if I win this weekend, I can make the playoffs. If I lose, I will be out. And my daughter has already clinched. Really? Really. Oh, my goodness. Give her a hug for me, will you? Jeannie Christmas. (laughs) Go ahead, D. Bro, I'm struggling for my life. (laughs) I'm struggling for my life just to get in. And she done clinched. Oh, yeah. So, anywho, okay, L.A. Rams at Arizona Cardinals wraps up Monday Night Football and the third quarter of Ben and Barry on football. We only have a few things left, Benny. Let's get ready to rock for the fourth quarter. Don't have a lot, Benny, but I do want to, again, We've been on the Coach Prime bandwagon, and he did lead Jackson State to the SWAC championship. He was named Coach of the Year for the SWAC Conference. His son is probably the Player of the Year for the SWAC Conference. So they might just change this to the Coach Prime Conference if he keeps this up. (laughs) But congratulations to Coach Prime. Definitely wanted to to give him a shout out because he is doing amazing things. All right. Anything on that? All right. No, I love what Prime is doing down there. Um, His kids look great. Um, I don't know. There's a lot of questions in my mind. First of all, I believe that he really loves where he's at and he loves the kids that he's working with. I believe that um, his son Looks pretty good. So he's a pretty good college quarterback. Whether or not he makes it to the next level, I don't know. But I wonder what's going to happen when some other major college openings come about and he starts getting pressured to take another job. Whether he's going to – because it's already happened this year already. He pretty much – as far Delphi's as we know, though, right? He turned them turned down, right? Down. Uh, Florida State? No, he went to Florida State. Florida State. He turned down. Um, it was a big school. Geez. It was a big school. Yeah. Uh, TCU. He turned out TCU and somebody else. Oh, he was rumored to be being courted by USC, which would have been gigantic. Right, right, right. But the Oklahoma coach took the USC job. So, you know, I I don't know how long he's going to be there, but he's kind of got the ball rolling. Uh, Eddie George is going to be coming into the SWAC, I think. Uh, There's some other guys that are looking to come into the SWAC as coaches. Uh, I I love what he's done and what he's doing. And, um, you know, just a great thing, man. They're going to start recruit. Here's the thing. Here's the crazy thing. From what I'm hearing, he's starting to recruit and really pull in a lot of four-star guys. You know? There's not a big difference between a five-star player and a four-star player when you look at the high school rankings. Okay? So if he can get some of them four-star guys consistently and pull in a five-star here and there, won't be any need for him to leave because he's going to be winning and winning and winning and winning. You know, these are kids that go to Florida State, Michigan, 
uh, 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 I was going to say not a lot of SEC schools because the SEC schools they don't get they don't even recruit anybody but four and five star athletes. But if he can steal some four star guys from some of these big schools and get them down there and get them believing, and here's really where the proof in the pudding is: if he can get some of them into the NFL. Well, that's what he, he said. That he said, you well, know, that, that's that, his that goal. People are coming here because they expect that this this going to help that's them. That's right. The NFL. That's right. But he hasn't done it yet. He just got there. So let's give him a couple of classes and see how many. Let's see how many Jackson State seniors get drafted in this next draft. All right. If there's one or none, the next year there'll be more, and the year after that there'll be more. And then he'll have himself a nice little thing going on. All righty. A couple more things I want to touch base on. Let's see here. Share the screen. All right, Benny. Dan Campbell won a game. The Lions only win for the season. And he took the time out to um, pay homage and mention the children who were killed in the shooting uh, up there. And, uh, you know, he's a pretty emotional type guy. And that was one of the more sad events. So um, <clears throat> I just wanted to, to, you know, take a moment to acknowledge that. And uh, again, you know, sending out thoughts and prayers to the families of the deceased and injured, you know, and, you know, all we can do is continue to work toward making it a better place so that this doesn't happen anymore. That's a lot of work to be done. All right. Anything from you? Uh, as far as this is concerned, I'm sure that after this happened, he made it a point in his mind to make sure that he said something about it. But after they won that game, as big a win as that was, and that was a huge win. If you saw Jared Goff running off that field and then jumping up and chest bumping the player, he only did that because that guy got in his way. He was headed straight for Dan Campbell. And when he got to him, they grabbed each other and hugged so hard. That was a huge, huge win for them. And he still was able to contain himself enough to make sure that he mentioned that incident at that school and he mentioned those kids and he said all their names, if I remember correctly. Yes, he did. Even a teacher. That was, that, that's, that's big, man. That's big. So, okay. Wanted to mention that. And then we're going to close out with this. We try to close out on a positive note. So the positive note is we just had the uh, week where everyone came out with the My Cause, My Cleats. And so they were able to um, dedicate to all of the different foundations and charities that they support and, and the different areas of need that they support. And you find out a lot about these guys and their own personal stuff, because a lot of times they have families with different disabilities and things, which focuses them, focuses them in on a particular area, be it cancer or autism or whatever. And then you can visit NFL auction and bid on those cleats. And that's how they raise money. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So the idea here, NFL auction and uh, if you go to nfl.com slash causes slash my dash cause my dash or dash my dash cleats you'll uh, visit that and then you can visit the link for nfl auctions also tell you okay. what i will take and make sure that this link is on our ben and barry on football facebook yes that's good all right yeah okay that wraps up Ben and Barry on football, November, November, December 8th, 2021. 
Uh, all I'll say is, again, happy birthday to my Bubba <laughs> He turned one years old. <laughs> it, it's so funny. Uh, I bought him a robot. <laughs> He got a little robot and it comes a apart robot. Like, hey, what's man, it made man, out of look let me tell you something robots and stem games that science technology engineering and math games for small kids is all the rage i'm getting ready to order this thing called a, a pixicade for like three of my young boys my young girl my little niece they're all in that six to twelve range they yeah had this, they had this thing out where you they give you the some paper and markers and you draw whatever pictures you want and you yeah. take a picture of it through it with your smartphone or ipad or whatever with the app and then you take that because of that you can then take that picture whatever it was you drew and it turns into a video game that you can actually play with other people like two player games and all of that and apparently they have different levels that you can go through and learning how to build games with this thing called Pixie Cake. It's only like $35. So I'm going to buy a few of them and give them out to some of my young, you know, our, all of our young kings and queens, you know, for, for Christmas. What What is the robot made out of? Plastic, for the most part. Hard plastic? Um, this is the thing. The robot is made out of, it's not real, real hard, you know? But okay. I'm finding kids' toys Today, especially with the stuff that we bought my, my grandson, these toys are practically indestructible because okay. he- Okay, that was, that was my real question. Oh yeah, he will throw whatever he got out of the playpen. This, yeah. I tell Tara, it's like he's being paid. Like every time he tosses something over the side of the bed or out the playpen, somebody's depositing some money into his account somewhere because he works right. really hard to make sure right. that everything in the playpen gets tossed. Yeah, so, like this. This is nice. I like the color. It's beautiful. It's got nice weight to it. But I gotta throw it. Gotta, gotta I gotta be. throw it because if I can't throw it, what good is it really? You I'll know. What I mean? you, so he will toss it. Yeah. Well, that's cool, man. That's cool. <laughs> good job. Good hey, job. Look, I don't know if he's gonna be a pitcher, a quarterback. You know, and then or a trash man. Mean, oh, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Hope, you know, hey, look, they make money and got good benefits. Oh, absolutely. I'm, bro, I'm yeah, not. I, I, ain't I, ain't. I ain't trash and trash, man, at all. But, um, and then the funny thing is, I bought him a little ball. It looks like a, a, a soccer ball. And he literally, the entire time he's in the playpen, the ball is constantly rolling up under his feet. So he's just moving it around with his feet, constantly kicking the head, kicking the dead, kicking it. I'm like, this kid's going to be able to do all types of stuff by the time he finishes. So, yeah, we had a lot of fun, man. So happy birthday to my Bubba What do you got? I got nothing, bro. I got nothing. I'm footballed out. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have another drink. I'm going to get something to eat. And I'm back in the fantasy lab. I, I got must wins on the line, babe. I got must wins on the line. All right. That's Let all I can say. tell you. Make sure you push the notification bell. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. And we look forward to seeing you in the next couple of days. Take care.